Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my Arduino and Electronics tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we are going to completely finish the Pong application that we've been working with. And like always, all the code is available in the description underneath the video. And now I'm going to jump in and show you the finished product. All right, so here it is, and there's the ball, and it hits the paddle, and you can see that it is bouncing back, and then I'm going to jump ahead here a little bit so that you can see it hits the other paddle, and the ball bounces back off of that. I am controlling both paddles with just two buttons, and you can see that we were able to bounce it back again. All right, so there it is. It's working. Now let's write some code. Okay, so we saw the finished product, and now what I basically have to do is take all of the code that I created previously and merge these two programs. So pretty simple, I'm just going to go and get my global variables that I created to make all of the ball code work. So I might as well just cut, cut that out of there, and we're just going to add in everything and then make the things work together. All right, so I have all of that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get all of the paddle um, or global variables as well. Cut that out of there. And we'll just come in here and paste that inside of there. Then I have to think about how the functions are going to be organized. I am going to basically follow the same type of flow. I'm going to go and get my clear paddles uh, function out of there. And if you haven't watched any of the previous parts of the tutorial, you definitely should, because I'm not going to go and explain everything that's going on here again, because I already did, and that would be kind of boring. I'm then going to have to think about how I'm going to merge. The most important part is merging the printing of everything. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say print stuff, and I'm not going to do anything with that at this point. Here's print paddles. Eh, I might as well just come in here and start thinking about it. Well, one of the things I'm going to have to do if we go back here and look, here is the update ball section. I see down here that I am going to clear the entire LCD, so I'm going to have to merge that in. Probably what would make the most sense is to come in and put that inside of here right now and have everything clear every time before we print both the paddles as well as the balls that are constantly going to be moving. I then think it makes the most sense to come in and set up the paddles and have those all print. So I'm going to come in here and grab this guy and paste him inside of there and that is going to contain the arrays for our paddles one thing i'm going to have to think about though is how i am going this is going to be the major problem is basically how i am going to create our characters because i am going to have conflicts if i use the same character number for multiple different things so i'm going to have to change that and that means i'm going to have to change some logic with my ball i'm not going to be able to take up the entire game board with my ball now i'm going to have to have part of the character numbers go to the paddles and then part of the character numbers go to the ball as it's being drawn on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I can only use character numbers from 0 through 15. So I'm going to use 0 and 1 for the paddles. And then for this one, I'm going to use 14 and 15. And then I'm going to use all the character numbers in between there for the ball drawing on our screen. I'm not going to need this part right here because I don't need to print anything to the serial monitor more than likely. I am then going to have to fix all of these guys. Let's go and just cut them out of there so I know what I have taken and what I haven't. So, of course, this is fine. The set cursor is fine. Then I'm going to have these are going to be the character numbers, 0 and 1. However, this is going to have to change to 14 and this one's going to have to change to 15. All right, so we have all of that set up, and we are going to be able to print our paddles. Now what I want to do, since I want to have all of my drawing done or printing on the LCD, I want to do it all for my print stuff function here. I'm then going to come in and look for where I am printing the ball. And up here is where I'm going to print the ball. However, I'm going to have to change some logic here as well. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to say... Well, first off, I'm going to say byte and character number is going to be equal to zero. And then I'm going to say if my ball y position inside of my battle board is greater than nine and that the ball 
y pos or ball what is this y or yes it's going to still be ball y is less than 70 then i'm going to be able to print the ball and what that's going to do is save us from trying to print anywhere where there are paddles so this is going to go from uh, basically it's going to restrict me from being able to print the ball in the first two parts where the panels are However, I'm still going to be able to handle ball collisions if it gets past the paddle or if it hits the paddle. The ball doesn't, you know, we don't need to display that. So I'm going to keep that. Everything else should be perfectly fine. Nothing else is going to change logic wise here. So I can just come in and copy and paste all of this stuff. So let's just go and get that out of there. And now I know that I'm going to be able to properly uh, draw our ball everywhere that it needs to go. And let's think about, do I need to do anything else? I don't think so. I think print stuff is basically handled and I'm printing balls and everything else looks like it's going to work out perfectly fine. You already saw the, you know, the working application, so you know that it works. All right, so what are we going to do next? Well, I think I need to handle my logic for printing the, pa the paddles the very first time we go through here and do that. So where is that at? There's the setup, and we're going to have to merge the setup and the loop for our balls as well as our paddles. So here is, where's print paddles? Oh, I already got print paddles there. Hmm. Actually, you know, um, I am calling print paddles here at the end of setup paddles. So I think I'm going to try to use my previous code. This isn't going to be optimized, but it's going to work. And that's what my main goal is here at this point in time. So I'm going to still keep print paddles in our code but it's only going to be called whenever we first set up our paddles and then it's not going to be called ever again after that. But basically going to do the same things again. So inside of here, I'm going to copy all of this stuff here and I'm going to also cover all of this. So I'm going to go and copy all of this out of here. This isn't the best thing here, but I'm just trying to get it to work. So everything's going to be exactly the same there, of course. And I can leave that be the way that it is. And that's basically all I need to worry about. All right. So up next, set up paddles. I'm still going to need this. So I'm going to copy this out of here. And I'm going to use print paddles again. So let's go and get the setup paddles. I'm really focused on getting the paddles to work most of all, and then I'll worry about the ball afterwards. What else am I going to need? I'm still going to need the ability to move up. However, the way I'm going to set this up is the anytime the user presses on a button, it's going to move the paddle for the main user, but it's also going to do it for the AI. I decided just to keep this kind of simple. I am going to not have an AI controlled paddle. You could easily do that just by having the tracking for the ball X direction or ball Y direction and go and have the paddle follow that. And then you could throw delays in to make the paddle for the AI either faster or slower. I'll leave that for you for homework because I have already covered so many other different things. But to keep this nice and simple, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get my AI paddle position, this guy right here, and I'm going to have it track exactly like the paddle position for the user. So all I need to do to make that work is just go in there like that and do that. All right, so that works. And then I'm going to have the move paddle down is going to work exactly the same way. So let's just come in and do that. And we're going to go in and get this guy. And again, we're just going to increase the paddle position for the AI controlled paddle and in exactly the same way as we do for the user one. All right, so we have all of that logic in there, so we can go and get rid of that. We are, of course, going to have to update the paddles after I move, and I'm going to mainly use everything exactly the same here. The only difference is, is I'm going to also need to handle the update paddles for my AI. And that's not going to be that hard though. Let's just come in and I'm going to do 16. So 16 is for our character that we're going to be working with. It's going to be the leftmost 
um, LEDs that are going to be lit up on our LCD panel. So what I want to do for the AI, it's going to be one. So you see here we have 16. And whenever we look at our paddles, you're going to see 16, 16, 16, 1, 1, 1, whenever we're working with the AI. So all I need to do here is come in and get this guy and then just set those individual parts of our LCD panel to one each time we update our AI paddle. So let's just come after this guy right here, paste in this one, and then we're going to use exactly the same setup again, except I'm going to change it to one instead of 16. And is there anything else I need to do? Um, yes, I'm gonna to have to also do the same thing for this one. So we, if we have an inactive part of our LCD panel representing our AI paddles, we're going to go and set that to zero, just like we did previously. And then if we, we're going to have to do the same type of logic down here. So for this guy, da, 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 let's paste that in there. Ah, but this isn't going to be that. It's going to be, so let's just go and copy this out of here and paste that in and then we'd basically just have to change to the ai equivalent so ai and ai and this is going to be exactly the same and this is going to be exactly the same because we're going to be moving them exactly in the exactly the same way and then once again we're going to do the same thing down here so let's go and copy this out and paste that in there and then we just change this to AI and everything else is the same except this is also AI. All right and now we have everything set up for that and it looks like we pretty much transferred over all of the code to make our paddles be able to print as well as update. So that is only going to leave us with setting up our ball. So let's go back up here to the top to make sure that this is saved. And we'll go back to the top and then we will slowly move in all of our ball data. So print ball, let's get rid of that. Let's also get rid of this guy right here. And where are we at? Well, we have the ability to get LED row values, which I've talked about in previous parts of the tutorial. None of that's going to change at all. And also we're going to be generating our ball arrays. None of that is going to change at all either. So let's go and get all of that and just cut it out of there and paste it inside of here. And then we're going to have to go and also copy over the setup ball whenever the game first starts out so that we know what position the ball has on the game board. Award a point is not going to change either. Also for homework, you could go in there and display scores if you'd like to. And there that is. And what else are we going to do? If you do display scores, though, make sure that you do not uh, mess up the character numbers in regards to the paddles and also for the ball. So what I would do in that situation, because we can only use 0 through 15 characters, I would go clear the screen, display a score, obviously throw a delay inside of there, and then do another LCD, you know, uh, screen clean, and then go from that point. But you could do whatever you'd like, of course. And after we have that all set up, we are going to still have to update our ball. And the, I don't know, let's just copy it over there and then let's take a look at what we don't need to do anymore. So one thing that we're not gonna need to do is we are no longer going to have to clear the LCD screen. And we're also not going to need to print our ball. But we are going to need to instead, so let's just get rid of this. We are going to instead call our function print stuff, which is, where is it? Where is our print stuff? There. We're going to have to call this guy instead for whenever we want to print everything. So let's go. We have all that set up properly. Let's change this from print ball to print stuff. And then that means we're not going to need our print ball function. And then... Everything else should be exactly the same. I can't think and I do not see any reason why any of this needs to change. So there is our update ball. 
and we delete that out of there and it looks like we are at the point where all we have is the setup code so and we're gonna have to merge those two things together so we can come in here and we can delete all of this and see what we can see here in the beginning and I think it's actually going to be a little bit easier to I got everything there all at the same time all right so that means I can save this and we can look at what is the same and what is different in regards to our setup now the serial monitor we're really not going to need but I'm just for this moment in time I'm going to use it so let's just go and cut that out of there and let's paste that into that and let's go well, you know what let's not go and do a cut there let's just leave it there so that we can see everything all at the same time then we have to think of the logic of what is going to come next well I think it makes sense to go in here and set up our input for our buttons next for setup because that's something that's not going to get in the way of any type of logic so let's just throw it in there and get rid of it and at that point in time I can either set up the paddles first or set up the ball first and I think I want to set up my ball first and print ball we are not going to need anymore we can just comment that out so I'm going to set up my ball first and let's throw that there and then I am going to set up the paddles after that and so set up paddles and copy that and then of course we're going to have to call print stuff again so print stuff not a very descriptive name but that is going to handle printing both the paddles as well as the balls to the screen so we have that all set up then we have to think about our loop because I think setup is basically good can't think of any other stuff we need inside of there we have everything pretty much covered so our loop for our ball we just call update ball and that is it and our loop for our paddles is going to be a little bit more complicated so what do I want to do first I might as well just get update ball out of the way because that's not going to cause any problems and there it is and update ball is completely taken care of and then I just have to think about how my setup or my loop is going to change for our paddle drawing so I see here that I have print paddles I would like to instead well that's obviously going to be changed to print stuff not print paddles so we'll change that to print stuff and it'll print the balls as well as the paddles at the same time and once again get this guy right here and throw that inside of there and then everything else should be exactly the same I see no reason why any of this needs to change because everything else has been set up properly so let's go copy that out of there and we can go and paste that inside of there and everything else looks pretty good and let's compile to see if I made any errors yes there's an error this says my paddle position and I'm just basically gonna have to go through here and fix a couple little errors anytime we're merging code like this there's no doubt gonna be some problems all right so redefinition of byte AI paddle position oh this is gonna be a global problem I think so I have AI paddle position is six and oh, that's pretty easy so what whenever I was simulating the paddle positions with the balls I went and threw paddle positions in there so let's just go and delete that and let's save it and we'll do a compile again and you can see that we have low memory I should maybe uh, if I was going to do even more complicated things with this I would most definitely go in and use an Arduino with a little bit more memory but for this it looks like it's pretty good and now I'm going to plug in my Arduino and you are going what you saw at the very beginning of this tutorial is exactly what I am looking at right now so let's come in here and we'll just upload it and see what goes on so there's our ball moving and there is our paddles moving and the let's go like this and the ball is moving well all right so pretty cool project hopefully somebody out there is going to actually make it if you do actually put this all together it would be really cool to leave me a comment and tell me how you en enjoyed or didn't enjoy this tutorial series and like always please leave your questions and comments below otherwise till next time